Hey guys, what is up and I welcome you all to a new League of Legends video. Before I go into this topic, I want to quickly say I have a second YouTube channel where I'll be uploading things that are not League of Legends related. So for instance, Heroes of the Storm. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out and subscribe. But let's get right back into the topic of this video. So of course, Zed is probably my most known champion and whenever I play him, especially on my stream, I get a lot of questions of people asking, why are you getting this build? When do you choose one build over the other? What happened to Blade of the Rune King? Why do you still get Blade of the Rune King? And so on and so forth. So with that being said, I decided to make a Zed video where I'll talk about three different Zed builds that I believe are all viable, just some more than others, and it all really depends on what you prefer more as a player. One thing I also want to say is that I will be mentioning Black Cleaver in many of these builds. I'm aware of the changes happening on the PBE, but nothing is final, so we'll just see how it goes. So let's start things off with the first build I will talk about, which is the build I also mentioned way back when I made my video, Our Assassin's Dead. Now back then when I mentioned this build, the Zed changes were very, very recent, so I was kind of speculating as to what I think will truly be strong. Now don't get me wrong, this is still a great build, it just really depends on the player and the playstyle that you enjoy. I just realized later on that I really do like the Blade of the Rune King on Zed, so I decided to stick to it and make a build around it. I'll go over that build a bit later, but talking about this one, you wanna go for the raw damage and the whole point is to get the spike damage a lot sooner. I only recommend doing this build if you're very very ahead in the laning phase and you wanna snowball exceptionally and try and close off the game as soon as possible. For the build, you wanna get the Brutalizer into a Tiamat followed by the Bloodthirster, then your boots, a Lucidity or Mobility boots into a Last Whisper, Black Cleaver, and then finish off the Hydra. So the pros of this build, probably the biggest early to mid game spike of all the three builds I will talk about, you have huge AoE damage in the team fight thanks to your team mat and your early Bloodthirster or at least the BF Sword, and also you have the Black Cleaver working exceptionally well with the team mat or Hydra. Your Deathmark will deal a buttload more damage early to mid game simply due to the raw damage items that you have. And people probably do not have the counter item to Deathmark just yet. I typically choose to do this build whenever I'm probably not split pushing too often in the game because we have a lot of AoE control and team fights like an Amumu ult and I want to just do a lot of raw AoE damage fast. However, the cons is the fact that it definitely scales the worst into late game since you have no real attack speed to work with. It's definitely the worst split pushing build, it's harder to stick onto your target with no Blade of the Rune King or Yomus, and QSS counters you even more since you're much more reliant on it since this build is burst damage and it's not so much consistent damage. But let's go to the second build of this video which is also my second most favorite build as well. I titled this one the old school Zed because this is simply the build you'll see most Zeds do especially in LCS and high level play. But before we go into the pros and cons of this build, let's talk about the build path itself. So you typically do want to get the Cutlass first, get the Brutalizer going, and then either finish your Blade of the Rune King or get your choice of boots like Lucidity, Mobility, Merc Boots, then make sure your Yomus and Blade of the Rune King are finished if they are not, then work towards Last Whisper and top it off with the beautiful Infinity Edge. Infinity Edge and Yomus work so well together because you get so much crit chance from the two, the Yomus active effect makes you attack more so you have a higher chance of critting overall, and in all honesty this is just a great build. So let's quickly go over the pros and cons. Like I said, a very standard build you'll see most Zeds do, and it just works. This is probably the best dueling and split pushing build out of all three of them because you have so much attack speed, your Yomus and Blade of the Rune King are simply designed to duel someone. Now I'm sure most of you are asking, when would I choose this build over the other ones? Well if I see that I'll be split pushing a lot this game and there's not really a whole lot of clumped up team fights that will probably happen based on the champion's pick, then typically this is the build of choice for me. Now even though I truly believe this build is probably the worst of the three when it comes to team fights around the early to mid game, unless you just play it very well, on the flip side, once you get the last whisper and especially the infinity edge your damage absolutely skyrockets and your mid to late game is among the best of the three builds because eventually you get to the point where every single auto attack hurts and you simply just do not rely on your death mark for the damage so when they get infinity edge when they get the QSS you're like well that's pretty cool but luckily my auto attacks do a ridiculous amount of damage I mean of course you can still have your death mark pop and watch the target just simply die in a couple of seconds but you're just not as reliant on it and the final thing like like I said earlier, your Yomus and your Blade of the Rune King active effects help you stick on your target much better and probably the best of the three builds while also being able to make an escape. The cons of this build, quite obviously you're not bringing a lot of AoE damage into the team fight since you don't have a Black Cleaver nor do you have a Tiamat or Hydra. And finally probably the lowest early to mid game damage spike unless you play it very well and your opponent messes up, but like I said you scale exceptionally well into late game, probably the best of the three. And finally the third build that we'll talk about which is my personal favorite 
hybrid and the one you see me using in this video right now. I call this one the hybrid build because all it really is is just taking the first two builds I just talked about, taking the best parts of each of them and throwing it into one big build. So with this build, the build path itself can differ. Your first option is just like the second build, you want to get the cutlass, you want to get the brutalizer and you want to finish the blade of the rune king. Get your boots, get your tia mag, get the last whisper going, finish off the black cleaver and then finish off the hydra. But here's the second option which I kind of like, you want to get the cutlass and hold off on finishing the blade of the rune king. Then you want to get the Brutalizer, start to rush the t map for that crazy early to mid game spike of just the raw damage. Once you finish that, you want to then finish off your Blade of the Rune King, then you want to start working towards your Last Whisper, get your Black Cleaver, and then finish off your t map. And of course, get your boots somewhere at the beginning. So the pros and cons of this build, like I said, my personal favorite one, the one I'm using in this very game right now. It really is taking just both builds of the previous ones I mentioned and throwing it into one. So with that being said, it has a good mix of split pushing, dueling, and AoE teamfights because you have the Blade of the Rune King for dueling, you have the Blade of the Rune King attack speed for split pushing, you still have the Brutalizer and Last Whisper for that help in dueling and just teamfighting in general, you have the Black Cleaver and the Tiamat or Hydra to help you in the teamfights for the AoE damage, you have the auto attack reset from the Tiamat or Hydra, and it really just kind of works together and I like it. This is the build I choose usually when I'm going to be doing a bit of split pushing and also team fighting whenever possible. The cons of this build is what you would expect of a hybrid build. It is not as strong as build number 2 in terms of split pushing or dueling and it's not really as snowbally as the first build either. But regardless that is probably my current build of choice. So that is it for this video guys, I hope you have learned something new and finally I have answered your questions as to why I do certain builds and really what are the builds. Please throw in a like if you did enjoy, subscribe to my second channel and this channel as well, check out the other videos and hope to see you guys for the next one. Peace!